This is about as budget as a custom gaming PC can get right now with a dedicated graphics card. Today, I'm gonna to show you exactly how to build one for yourself, and we're even gonna benchmark 20 games so you know exactly how it performs. Let's have a look. GVG Mall is not just the sponsor of today's video, but it's literally the exact website that I'm personally using to buy my Windows 10 key for the PC that we're building today. GVG Mall is hooking up Flipping Friday viewers with an exclusive 18% off discount code if you use ZTT18 at checkout. Please don't be one of those PC flippers that has to explain in the description of your post what an unactivated version of Windows 10 is. Just pay the tiny price tag on GVG Mall, way cheaper than retail by the way, activate every single one of your builds, and reap the benefits in your flipping business. Business. All the links you need are down in the description and don't forget to use discount code ZTT18. All right, so without wasting any more time, let's jump straight into the parts list today. And first up is the CPU and motherboard combo that I actually snagged up used off Mercari for just $80. It's packing a four core and four threaded first generation Ryzen 3 1200 and the motherboard is a Gigabyte A320M S2H. This is actually some serious price to performance to start out a budget build guide. And it's honestly exactly what I would recommend you guys doing. I've been scouring Mercari every single day for the past few weeks and you can almost find an in-stock budget first or second generation Ryzen CPU paired with a motherboard like this, it's a great way to kick off a budget build. If you're searching yourself, I would recommend first realizing that you can easily buy a slightly higher end Ryzen 5 2600 for around $100 and a decent B450 for $50 which totals $150 and then base all of your purchasing decisions around that. $150 for a combo like that is honestly probably the best price to performance that you can get for budget builds right now, so if you're gonna buy something cheaper like a Ryzen 3 1200 and an A320 motherboard like I did today, just make sure that the price that you're paying makes sense compared to the $150 combo using the 2600 and B450. This here is a 2x8 gigabyte kit of Gale Evo Potenza RAM that's clocked at 3200 megahertz, and I also snagged this up off Mercari for just $35. Remember that you gotta be careful with your RAM kit selections when you're using a first generation Ryzen CPU motherboard. There were a ton of compatibility issues when they first launched, so I would recommend doing research before before buying something and trying to find someone else online that used the same combo that you're trying to use. A great place to do that would be the ZTT Discord server. Not only do we have Dr. Deals posting the best PC hardware deals throughout the day for us PC builders and PC flippers, but it's also just a really good place to have a conversation with like-minded individuals. And if you wanna join us, feel free to click that link that's down in the description, or just go to the super easy URL of discord.gg slash ZTT. Moving on, we get to the SSD, and you've hopefully seen this on my channel before. This is another one of those NetTac 500 gigabyte 2.5 inch SATA SSDs. And the only reason I'm using this again is because I actually bought like four of them because they were on sale down to just $37. It's a perfect option for a budget flip like this. The power supply I chose fits that description as well. This is of course yet another EVGA 450 VR that I paid just $25 for used on EVGA B stock. Once again, this isn't the 100% most optimized power supply out there and it's not rated that high. It's fine for a budget system like this or especially a budget flip. But if you do think that you'll be upgrading your components inside the build in the near future, I would definitely recommend just buying a better power supply now with more wattage and a higher tier rating on the LTT tier list. And next up we have the case, and honestly I'm just embarrassed that I have to explain myself again, but this is yet again the Antec NX200M that I've used like three times now in the last month or so. It's just such a good case for being $45 to $50, but I definitely need to show some more variety on my channel, so sorry again about that. It only comes with one black fan, so you'll need to add your own like I did with this three pack of up here RGB fans, but other than that it's pretty solid for the price and that PSU cutout allows us to apply some white carbon fiber vinyl action like I did, which really ties the color scheme together. Those cable extensions get that job done as well, but today I tried something different other than our typical Asia horse cables that I normally go with. These are from a brand called F-Stop and they only cost $18, which is why I wanted to try them out, but oh boy, I'll never be buying these again. They 100% get the job done, we don't have any power issues and they at least look decent, but the problem is that these cables are super skinny, so these cable combs just freely move around the cables like this and it was super annoying to install, I'm never gonna be buying these ever again. But now that brings us to the last piece of the puzzle, the graphics card obviously, and this one you can actually pick up right now on AliExpress for a not so terrible price. This here is the Sapphire RX 564 gigabyte card and it not only fits our black and white aesthetic perfectly, but yeah, these are all over AliExpress and you can buy one today if you don't mind paying a bit more than what they're worth and waiting on that obnoxiously long 20 to 30 day shipping. Now, if you're trying to follow this build guide, you don't need to buy the exact model of graphics card that I did. There's a ton of 460s and 560s on AliExpress to choose from. Just make sure that you're buying from somebody that has a high star rating and a lot of selling history 
and please make sure you're getting a graphics card that at least fits the color scheme of the build you're trying to do. I shouldn't need to tell the ZTT audience that last bit because I know most of you are rocking that aesthetic builder's mindset, but either way, here's what the final parts list is looking like for my most updated $350 gaming PC build guide. Just like always, that price is before the aesthetic only options because you don't absolutely need them. If you do want to copy the cable extensions, vinyl wrap, and RGB fans, then your total would be closer to $400. But now it's time to jump straight into the benchmarks and just remember that we are dealing with a very budget $350 build here today, so these numbers aren't going to be super impressive or anything. And the first game Sam tested was Valorant, which is a nice easy start, and in 1080p with low settings, we got 114 FPS. Next up was Rainbow Six Siege, and when using the built-in benchmarking tool in 1080p with medium settings, we got 86 FPS. After that was CSGO, which is definitely relying on that Ryzen 3 1200 more than anything, and in 1080p with pro settings, we actually got a pretty solid average FPS of 120. Everyone's favorite Fortnite followed up after that, and during an online game in 1080p with pro settings, we actually got over the 100 FPS mark with 105. Grand Theft Auto 5 followed up after that because I still see a ton of people playing this game and requesting it in my benchmarking run, so you know we got you covered, and in 1080p with medium settings, settings, this PC cranked out 94 frames per second. Valheim tailed after that, which is the first truly demanding title in this benchmarking run, and in 1080p with low settings, we got just under that 60 mark with 59 FPS. Next up was Apex Legends. Sorry we don't have one of Sam's baller sniping montages on this one, and in 1080p with low settings, we got 74 FPS. Just like always, we gotta include a 3D Mark Times by run in here, and this poor little $350 gaming PC only cranked out a measly score of 1,873. And as promised, here are 10 more benchmarks just so you know exactly how a budget system like this will perform. Shout out to Sam again for the benchmarking the heck out of the system. And here are the mostly harder to run AAA titles so you can see what this Ryzen 3 1200 and RX 560 combo are capable of. If you guys are still watching to this point, then shout out to you for watching to the end. It would be much appreciated if you guys could show Sam some love down in the comment section for benchmarking yet again the heck out of this gaming PC. And just like always, you can click the video that's on the screen now if you want to see a full PC gaming setup guide that would pair perfectly with a budget system like this. And just like always, I hope you enjoyed this video.